The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Hack Show. Hey Ben. What? I have an Intel Edison. Oh, that's the new single board computer from Intel. It is a dual core Atom processor, x86, along with built-in RAM, flash, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Normally when we use single board computers, we use Raspberry Pis. Mm -hmm. You just said it has all of those crazy things packed into one tiny package? Right. Cool. Yeah, it's smaller than those and it's also x86 instead of ARM. So it's closer to a traditional PC or Mac than an ARM Raspberry Pi or Beagle in his. Okay, so what are we gonna do with it? Well, I was thinking we can make an instrument with it. I was inspired by the Music Tech Fest in Berlin. There's a thing you can do called VST, Virtual Studio Technology. Basically a synthesizer that runs in software instead of the traditional hardware. We could put one of those on there and make it into some sort of MIDI-driven music device. Cool, so are we gonna make like a keyboard, or like guitar, or like some drums? I'm thinking wackier. I'm thinking a laser harp. Ooh, so lasers instead of strings? That's right. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, like I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week. Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I'm going to do some tests for the laser harp. Now I got this individual laser pointer element and it's pretty easy to use. You just apply three volts to it and ground and it shoots out a laser. Over here I have a photoresistor and I put it into a little 3D printed case. The reason I've made 3D printed cases already is so if I align them both to the bottom of this breadboard, they will be at the same height and therefore the laser will point directly into the photocell. The photocell is recessed inside of this assembly, so ambient light has less of an effect on it. So let's just do a quick test here, just to make sure the laser is working. I've got my bench power supply here. Let's just dump, well I shouldn't dump five volts into it, but it'll be okay if I just do it briefly. Let's just see if it works. Yep, okay, laser's on. So we have our five volts here, so let's plug that in. Now I've got this 3.3 volt low dropout regulator. What that means is the amount of voltage you can pipe into the regulator can be lower before the regulator will cease to function. All right, so we have the five volts here going into the 3.3 volt regulator. The five volts is also going through a 10K resistor and a 10K pot that allows us to adjust it. And that is going to go into the photoresistor. And then the other side of the photoresistor goes to ground. So what that will do is it will allow us to basically use the photoresistor as a switch. I'll attach this to ground here. All right, cool. Use my meter just to see where we are. Now the photoresistor is analog. The more light you give it or take from it, there'll be a different rating. However, if that voltage level goes past a certain amount in an integrated circuit, it'll either go high or low, which will allow us to use it as a digital switch. Let's turn on the power supply. Let's see what we got over here. Okay, 4.9 volts. The voltage changes when I block off the light. Now again, this is just getting scattered light in at an angle, so it'll be different once we actually shoot a laser directly into it. I thought about using photodiodes because they're faster. However, the peak sensitivity for those is, oh, what is it? Basically it's infrared and this is visible light. So I'm using a photo resistor because it actually works better with visible light. And obviously the ambient light will affect it, but probably not that much. As I'll show you, the laser gives us a pretty good value. Let's try it again. I've got the diode hooked up and nothing. Okay, what did I do wrong? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I don't have ground hooked up. Well, there's your problem. I always thought it'd be cool in a movie if Arnold Schwarzenegger like shorted some guy out to like a fuse box in like a water filled basement and said, you're grounded. There we go, there's a laser and it's pointing right into the <clears throat> photo resistor. If I interrupt it with my finger, it should jump up to the nominal voltage of five or 4.9. Okay, that's doing what we want it to. See the change? Later on, we'll use the oscilloscope to show you the exact speed that we get because we also have to make sure this is fast enough to be used as a musical instrument. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hook this up to a logic gate, specifically a NOT gate, AKA an inverter. I could hook an LED directly up to the output of the photoresistor. However, that would probably affect the signal. 
So by putting it through a logic gate, we can actually isolate the signals and get a, a cleaner result. So I'm gonna just hook up this LED here. And the idea is we want to basically get an LED indication of if it's working or not. The reason why that's important is because when we actually build this laser harp, we're gonna have to tweak all of these and make sure they're pointed straight. And uh, an LED indicator will be great for that. It'll also look good on camera. Okay, so I'm gonna take that voltage level we were looking at with the meter. I'm gonna hook that up to this inverter. Should be right here. There we go. So when the beam is broken, the light turns off. And see how this, this is basically analog, but the light is either on or off. That's because we're passing it through a not gate. Let's look at it on the scope. Let me hook this up. The yellow line is going to be our signal. So we're at about five volts, maybe a little lower. Yeah, see how we get, it's basically, it doesn't, it, we don't have a slope at all. It's basically just a square wave. If we look at the actual photoresistor itself, we'll see a different story. Let's take a look at that. Let's scroll over and take a look. I, I mean, it's not too bad, but you can see there's definitely a slope on it as it rises. So what we want to do is we want to make this as clean as possible. See how the voltage changes? It slowly goes up and then it stays at its maximum until dropping back down again right there. I mean, that would actually probably work, but something else we need to think about is that we're going to be putting this into the Intel Edison. The Intel Edison is based off a modern x86 Intel chip. Internally, it runs at 1.8 volts, just like your computer probably does. So the I.O. for it is also 1.8 volts. So we have to take this five volts and knock it down to something that we can put into the Edison without wrecking it. And that's what this next chip is for. All right, so I've attached the high to low level shifter. So the output of the NOT gate is going into the input or one of the inputs on the level shifter. And that output is going into our scope as line two. So on the scope, we see the yellow line, which is the voltage at the photoresistor. And right now the light is shining on the photoresistor, it means it's fully conducting current, meaning it's pulling the signal to low because it's allowing the voltage to be dropped down. That's why we have the big resistor in front of it because if we didn't, it would be a straight connection to ground and that would be bad. The blue line on the scope represents the output that's going to be going into the Edison. So let's try breaking the beam. All right, see how they swap around? Now, if we take a look at it closely, let's pause it here. Ah, yes, you can see the transition point. See that? So again, the photoresistor is acting as an analog signal. See how the analog slope is rising there? But once it gets to a certain point, and that would be the trigger threshold of the NOT gate, that's when the output triggers. See how it basically just drops straight down, the blue line drops straight down right there? And that's good, that's what we want for digital signaling. Let's take a look at the end of it. Ooh, it's kind of a messy end. Once it gets below a certain voltage, the inverter turns off and we get, you know, basically a square wave. Cool. The next thing I want to check is actually the speed at which this will work. Because again, this photoresistor is not going to be as fast as a photodiode. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn it to run and I'm just gonna flick my finger through as quickly as possible. I could use the trigger, but I don't really need to. Okay, so that's our actual pulse width. That was me moving my finger pretty quickly. About 10 milliseconds, which means 100 notes a second. That's not bad. I mean, who could play 100 notes a second? Maybe Mozart or Salieri. Now that I know this will probably work, I can proceed with making 24 of these. What I've managed to do this uh, thus far is lay everything out on this proto board. The audio codec, the Intel Edison, some level shifters, 5 volt regulator, and an audio amplifier. We have 12 volts coming into the audio amplifier. The uh, regulator is dropping that down to 5 volts. Then that gets fed to the Edison. Edison is giving 1.8 and 3.3 to this audio codec. The thing we need to get uh, sorted out now is uh, the GPL input going through these level shifters coming from the laser rig that Mr. Heckendorn has built. In the meantime, I, I put a little button on here as a test. So um, this button is pulled high. It goes to one of the inputs on just one of these level shifters. And then the output is going into pin J17.5 on the Intel Edison, which is mapped to four in the Mara library. And I wrote a little bit of code to see what happens when the, the button is pressed. So over here in the code, um, we call the Mara library and STDIO. UN ISTD. Here's the main. We set up the, the GPIO pin. Uh, we initiate Mara. We set up a GPIO pin, and then we make it an input. Then um, now for the the loop here, we're just we're just reading that pin four, and then if it if it gets something, it'll say switched. And then it'll say zero or one. So now let's let's run this. So right now it says switch one. When I press the button, it says switch zero. Switch one. Switch. Zero. Since I managed to get this GPIO test to work, I'm going to take this rig over to Ben's desk and um, hook up the laser inputs.
Okay, we're gonna attach Felix's Edison setup to my laser. So I'm gonna plug in the power for the Edison and plug the Edison into the breakout board. All right, now uh, got this plugged in. So we're gonna power up the Edison. I'm not gonna power this up until the Edison's powered up. All right, here comes your Edison. I'm gonna check the voltages on the level shifter. Do, 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 do. Felix is gonna SSH into it from his computer. Okay, yeah, I got, uh, I don't have any voltage yet. Um, does it take a bit for the voltage to pop up or what? Well, I'm not seeing the 1.8 either. Oh wait, there it is. Okay, and then GPIO is 1.6, so it must be active high. Okay, I'm gonna attach the grounds together. I'm gonna attach the output of my inverter. Okay, and I'm gonna check the voltage going into the Edison to make sure it's not five volts. It's 1.3. All right, I'm gonna try tripping the laser. Ready, Felix? Yeah, I'm ready. Zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Awesome! All right, it looks like the GPIO worked. Always remember to check what kind of voltages your IO can tolerate. Okay, so Felix, we should check one more thing. Mm -hmm. We should see exactly when the 1.8 volt rail turns on okay. with the system. Because I noticed if you're not powering the buffer with 1.8 volts, it will output five volts, which we don't want right. to have no, happen. Absolutely not. I mean, what we're gonna do when we actually build this thing is the five volt rail here is actually going to be powering the photoresistor sensors, but we want it to all turn on at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's no chance of us putting large voltages into the Edison. The next thing to do, Felix, is to get this GPIO to play a mini note. So when it goes from one to zero, start the note. When it goes from zero to one, end the note. So be like, beep. That's probably how it won't work with the harp because the harp will just be like, bling, bling. but just for now, like note on, note off. Yeah, I'll see how to get that interfaced. So we got everything connected, everything's working all right. The GPIO is, is uh, sending signals and that's good. And what I need to do now is uh, take that GPIO signal and map it to a virtual MIDI device. And um, it turns out that the virtual MIDI module is not installed in this kernel. So I need to figure out how to recompile the kernel and add the um, virtual MIDI device module and then enable it. After I do that, then I can figure out how to structure a, um, a MIDI signal and whenever the GPIO comes in, I can take that, send it to the virtual MIDI device or I can connect fluid synth to it and then send out audio signals. So now I'm gonna go figure out how to recompile the kernel. Okay, here is a flag wave shape that I made using Illustrator, kind of based off Karen and I's drawings. It looks okay, but I think it needs a little bit more interest. So I modified it with the skew tool and a warp tool to make it taper a little bit, kind of like a real harp, which kind of exactly looks like this. I mean, we don't need to taper it that much, but as long as we have kind of the same feel. So down here, we need enough space to put the electronics. I think they should all fit there. So what I did next was I drew in the emitters and detectors. So they're all in a line and there's 24 of them. So this will do uh, two octaves and there's a straight line between this one and the bottom one. So on a top down view, we see this here and we have a spacer here, which is 1.5 inches. And so I drew in the piece that holds the laser there. That's represented by this here. And then I drew it over here. So we'll take this holder, attach it to the piece of probably three millimeter plywood if I had to guess. And then yeah, that's the pivot point right there. So if you need to rotate it a little bit, you can. And then these notches here will fit into the side of the unit here. So that's how we'll line all of those up. It'll be a lot of work putting that together, but you know, that's life. And then the detectors down here, they'll kind of work the same way. The detector looks like this and there's holes in it to mount the photoresistor. And it's got kind of a deep well because I want it to be isolated a little bit to uh, block out ambient light. It'll work kind of the same way, except for the pieces that hold this in place will be horizontal and there'll be a hole in them which this piece will stick through. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to separate this out and laser cut it out of cardboard just to get an idea for the size. And then I can figure out the best materials to make the entire thing out of. So I'm gonna keep 3D printing the emitter detector holders and uh, yeah, I'll get an idea of the size and then we'll go from there. But I've got some aluminum spacers coming so we can put those between the halves along with everything else because I want this thing to be really rigid. Mostly so the lasers hit their targets because you know, the laser is going 14 inches and then it has to go into this hole. So there's not a whole lot of room for error. Oh no, I've been framed by Salvador Dali. Normally a harp has a cutout section here so you can you know, put it against your chest. This one doesn't really have that, but I still think you could go bling, 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 bling. 
I don't know, we'll figure out how to play it later. And you're gonna, we're gonna have to play this with like some smoke. It'll be like a CD club, because otherwise you won't be able to see the lasers. We have two octaves. Uh, I didn't quite fit all of them in my text, but so there'll be 24 virtual strings. And we needed about one inch between each string, and that actually dictated the length of this opening, which is 24 inches. And then the maximum distance is 14 inches. So we know the laser works at 14 inches, which means it'll definitely work at 11 inches, like this right here. And this fatter portion down here, this is where we'll put the electronics. So what I think I'm gonna do next is I'm going to start making little individual modules that we can put along the harp, and then I'm gonna think of the best material to make this out of. This, Obviously I cut this with my laser and had to tape it together, but for the real harp, I want it to be really solid and stiff. So I can either make it out of sections of wood or I might be able to use a piece of six millimeter black PVC foam. This is obviously big enough and it'll fit on my router. However, it's a lot flimsier than wood. So I don't know, I mean, I could probably use this and reinforce it, but if I use my laser, I have to patch it together. So I have to think of the way to make this large harp as solid as possible using the equipment and materials I have here at the shop. I designed a few more parts. This is going to hold the laser emitter. And this will stick into the frame, like right on the inside. So here's how it works. Take the laser emitter and I rewired some better wires too. You put it in place, we'll probably just glue it into that. Then this goes here, like so. And I've got some additional brackets on this at right angles, just to give it more strength. Again, we wanna keep this as rigid and uh, straight as possible. So if we make the frame rigid, that gives us the best chance to have our lasers aligned. So there'll be a nut here when we actually do it. So the idea is this is pointing down your laser emitter. If you need to adjust it, you can reach into the top and twist it a little bit to the left and the right. Because again, this thing is put together in two pieces like this. The biggest angle of misalignment is gonna be like that. That's gonna be where the issue is. So we can compensate for that by having a laser that can tilt left and right. So yeah, um, I ordered a few new screws from McMaster Car with flatter heads here because these things are gonna be like right up next to each other. Uh, yeah, probably tomorrow morning, Karen and I will make a little assembly line and wire up and build all these emitter uh, receiver units. I cut a secondary layer for the top half of the harp. This will give us rigidity since we can't cut this in one continuous piece on the laser. The uh, emitters are gonna go on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and jigsaw the pieces in place. I mean, this one's pretty obvious. It goes down here. So I'm going to screw it and glue it. These screws aren't final. I'm just putting them in to hold the glue in place. Now that's how they assemble cars now. They only weld them enough to hold the glue. Here's the top half of the harp. We have 24 lasers for 24 notes, which is two octaves. One thing I noticed is when I put these pieces in, they weren't quite as straight as I would like, even with the braces. They're all kind of leaning a little bit in this direction. What I think I'll do is I'll wire them up just to make sure they work. And then I will take an average, uh, basically rotational measurement from all of these. And then I can actually shift the position of these at the bottom a little bit, to compensate for the fact that these are a little tilted. For now, I think I'm gonna wire these all up so I can make like a big laser, it'll be really cool. Yeah, it'll be like a laser comb. Let's test it out. Yay. So you see some of them are misaligned. That's why we have these screws so we can realign them. Actually, probably a better way to do this is to shine them on a further target so we can see how much they change because the further they shine, the more error you're gonna see. Ah, uh, let's see. Let me go to the ceiling. These pieces also will be straighter once we have the other side in. See how those two lines are really close there? I mean, as long as they're pretty close at this distance, which is probably about what, six feet? They should be 
pretty good once we actually, you know, put everything together. So what I'm gonna do is put the other piece onto this to keep these even straighter, and then I'll do my final adjustments, because right now they're kind of hanging in space and they're just harder to align in this way. But I mean, it does work. It takes about 750 milliamps of current to drive all of these, so we'll keep that in mind when we're attaching the regulators and power supplies. But yeah, um, you know, when you interrupt these beams, it should play music. At least that's our plan. Okay, we're about to run out of time for this first half of the laser heart project. Let me just recap what we've done. So we made a laser test circuit to see if we could interrupt a beam and cause it to trigger digital I.O. We then took a converter to take that digital I.O. and knock it down to a voltage level that was safe for the Intel Edison's GPIO, general purpose input output. Felix set up a VST MIDI music driver on the Edison to make it play sweet music. I built the top half of the harp with all of the emitters and I lined them up as carefully as I could. So in the second part of this project, in the next episode, we're going to continue by building the bottom half of the harp making sure everything lines up for the lasers and it's isolated from ambient light. Felix will finish up recompiling the Yocto kernel so he can include MIDI support so the C code that senses these lights can directly drive the MIDI tracks. And then I will do all the wiring and power supply work while he finishes up the Linux stuff because you know Felix is the Linux guy. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I think we made some pretty good progress on that harp. Yeah, pretty much all the elements are working. So in the next episode, we're gonna combine everything together into a working laser harp and then play some sweet tunes. Yeah, I'm gonna challenge you to some harp hero. Harp blink, hero. Blink, 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 blink. Bow, 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 bow. We'll see you next time. It's like some sort of puzzle from Uncharted. You know, like those really elaborate things the pirates built for whatever reason in that game. Like they spent all their treasure on the puzzles leading to the treasure. Jack, you're my number one guy. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.